All right. Good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming tonight to the, uh, the November 19th uh, council meeting. I'm going to ask everybody to please stand and we'll do the uh, pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'm going to ask the clerk to call the roll. Mayor Patricelli. Present. Councilman Torrencello. Present. Councilwoman Dunn. Present. Hey, uh... I'll take the first order of business to be the uh, reading of the minutes of the previous meeting. Uh, Mayor, I'll make a motion that we dispense with the reading of the minutes of the November 5th meeting. And I'll second that motion. Okay. Our call the roll. Councilwoman Dunn. In favor. Councilman Torrencello. I'm going to abstain because that was not at the, uh, that meeting. Mayor Patricelli. In favor. Uh, we'll go right into uh, reports of Walters as a committee. Okay, I'll start from the uh, general manager's office. Uh, can everybody hear me with my mask on and right close to the mic here? Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, bulk drop-off. Uh, that was new to the city this year, uh, the secondary pickup. Uh, we did that October 26th, 27th, and 29th down at Hudson Shores. Uh, we had 211 total uh, visitors that came dropping off uh, rubbish that day, oh, there was three days, 59 on the 26th, 65 on the 27th, and then 87 on the 29th. We followed that up with a curbside pickup where we started picking up where residents had to call in. Uh, we developed a NCR form, three-part form. Uh, that one copy went to the resident, one copy went to the Department of Public Works, and then one stayed in my office. Uh, that day we had 58 customers uh, that picked up. Tomorrow we're doing another uh, bulk pickup, which is 26, and we're rescheduling for the 18th of December. A uh, tonnage uh, from Hudson Shores, just for the three days, the pickup where we pulled out metals was 21 tons uh, over the three days. Uh, and curbside that we picked up that 30th of the month was 13 and a half tons. Uh, so I think it was a valued uh, change. Um, we'll still look to do that again next year. Uh, but we also can still will continue the Friday pickups uh, at the end of the month. Uh, one of the outcomes of it, uh, which we were hoping to do, was start to solidify some of the cracks that might be in our database for building department. And we had six uh, residents that showed up to drop off their boat, but they weren't registered. So we also got six violations uh, that were written and sent to the court system uh, to get those properties under underway. Uh, the bike path. Um, we're nearing the end of the bike path. You now, the changes that have come, uh, we're going to be paving in the spring uh, because it's getting too late in the season. We talked with the Department of Transportation, uh, but we will be doing temporary striping to identify the bike lane for the winter. Um, but any of the uh, changes they want to see is we did talk about possibly not maintaining the bike path over the winter months, only the areas where we had to. Uh, but Department of Transportation uh, is looking to make sure that the path is open over the winter, uh, so we'll be looking to maintain that uh, as well. But we do have a new piece of equipment that the Department of Public Works will be able to handle, uh, the new Ventrac system, uh, so that'll take care of that uh, component. Can I ask a quick question? Sure. So the striping, that will be like that white line or whatever in front of the arsenal, to designate the bike path in front of the arsenal? That's correct. Is there going to be a yellow line then down the middle of Broadway to move the cars over? Yes. Okay. That's, that's everything we talked about. Um, it, in fact, there's seven items that they did talk about uh, from our engineering firm uh, with the Department of, Public, or the Department of uh, Transportation. They've agreed uh, to do all that as temporary, so it might be dashed and solid, uh, but that's still we have to iron that out for the upcoming winter. As long we as wanted to move the cars over. Yeah, we wanted to delineate them. that for sure, okay. uh, especially during the winter months. Yeah. Excuse me, can I ask you a question on the bike path? How are they going to handle the north and end of it, from 21st Street to 23rd, where there's no curbing anymore? They're just going to plow it up to the doorstep? Well, that's one of the reasons why um, we do have the Ventrac system, uh, which is a small tractor with an auger 
on the front end of it. Okay. So we will be trying to maintain that, you know, as efficiently as we can. But how? I think what we're uh, going to experience is probably trial by error and see how it goes. I still don't understand why they took the curbing out. Because now, basically, the road goes right up to the doorstep of people's houses. Ooh. There is no curbing in that area at all. That's it's correct. Just open lane. Yeah. A lot of that will be more, and I believe also when they mark it, it'll be a lot more delineated it when it's be. marked. I know it's not the best, as good as the curb, but I think that's the one of the. Uh, it'll, it'll show it a little bit, but I I, I wondered at myself how it's going to have to work. And it wasn't it wasn't a project that was done internal. This went to the Department of Transportation. This was done by two sets of engineers, both from you know our side uh, and theirs from the design standards. And uh, you know having that come out, I would have much preferred a curb myself because it delineates and it's a safety factor too. Uh, but. The Department of Public Works was doing the funding, and it looks like that went through that level of review. Uh, you thought they would have probably caught that probably three or four years ago when this went into design. Can I ask a question, too? Really question sure. About the bike trail. Is there going to be any signage or anything for safety on walking in front of the ramps and to get to the uh, park? Because I walk that, and it's terrible. It's marked as a pedestrian. But nobody looks. They just pull around the corner. There's no signs or anything that people are using. That. Yes, signage actually is a component of what's uh, to come uh, in it. Uh, we are there are there's going to be some uh, signage being put in over the next few weeks okay. in order to do it. Where I think you're talking specifically about it is where you come off or you come on to 787. Right. Yeah. 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 One of the components of that was access directly to the Hudson Shores Park. Mm -hmm. um, but where we're actually making improvements in this design is going to be in our bridge study that we just solidified with the city of Troy. We're doing a combined uh, study, which actually encompasses anywhere from um, Fifth Avenue, I'm sorry, Sixth Avenue, 19th Street, all the way down into Hudson Shores. And it's specifically for improving connectivity to Hudson Shores. So the fact that we have low illumination and stuff under the bridge, all that's going to be the component of this study to now help fix what hasn't been included in this. So I think we're looking through that, Matt, if you know what I mean. Um, it's not something that's kind of going to be brushed underneath and passed over. Uh, but it's, it's a secondary walk. It, it is. It is. It's very much so. And we're looking at uh, probably another bike you know, lane or safety lane underneath the bridge, illumination and so on to really help through that. Okay. And I, one of the things I know, underneath the bridge on the south side, I, I have not checked it yet to see, but I know that those lights were out. Yes. Supposedly national grid, so. Supposedly they're working on that. They're working on that. To get that up, yeah. They're on the, they're on the north side, but they're it's not the on south the south side. side. They're not working. Uh, let's see, um, COVID, um, we know that there's been an increase in cases uh, within the city. Um, we know there's two at the high school, and we know there's a number of uh, residents that currently have, <clears throat> have been identified as quarantined uh, within the city. How many uh, I know, all together, sir? I'm sorry? How many all together? Uh, well, we have 29 cases of COVID within the city currently, and there are 32, I think it is, on um, the watch or the, the quarantine list. Thank you. Um, but with that and some of the safety factors that we're starting to see, um, the city hall will probably, and I haven't talked to the council on this, this is one of the things we're going to be talking about this evening, uh, but it's my recommendation that effective uh, close of business tomorrow, that city hall close only to the public uh, or anybody coming in, but make that to where um, we have appointments, where we do things by email or phone calls, um, just for the safety of what we're seeing. It has not been a directive yet from the governor, but I know a, no a number of other municipalities are starting to do the same thing. Uh, I think from a business continuity, uh, we can do that moving forward. Uh, but I think from a safety perspective, is to, instead of bringing people in 
Um, I know our Water Elite uh, Policy Police Review Committee is going to be going to virtual uh, at our next meeting. Uh, I make a strong recommendation that the council do the same uh, and start going back to where we were that period between March and uh, June, uh, July of this past year uh, for the safety of all the residents and ourselves as well um, until we can get a grip in our handle uh, on the COVID crisis. I think that's the recommendation I make on behalf of the city too. That's all I have at this point. Very good. Oh, uh, one final thing. Um, uh, Acting Chief Strzok uh, worked on a assertion uh, form for when we do close the city uh, hall for residents, uh, but it's got a QR code too, uh, which has um, five questions that will pop up on someone's phone, again, for contract uh, contact tracing uh, to make sure we really start to do um, help the process in case something should happen. Uh, so we'll be putting that into play upon closing as well. Okay. Yes. Right, thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Great. Good. The, uh, we have time, a special uh, presentation to make to Danielle Woodwork. How are you, Danielle? Hey, Danielle. How are you doing? Danielle, uh, I'd like the uh, city clerk to read a little, uh, little uh, background of what you've been able to accomplish, and, uh, and we go from there. Yep, right here. Right there. That's good. Okay, I got a picture. So, our <laughs> November 2020 citizen of the month is Danielle Woodruff. Danielle resides at 1207 Hillside Drive. She enthusiastically started a community garden at her home, the Garden on the Hillside. She coordinated volunteers and tended to the garden regularly to provide fresh vegetables to the community. From May to November of this year, Danielle has served 972 residents, 608 pickups and 364 deliveries, and the produce was provided to community provided to the community included 442 tomatoes, not including cherries, 886 collards, 782 pears, 122 cucumbers, and 82 bunches of kale. Can I, can I just say that? You have to add those, because she doesn't know this, but in the morning when I walk my dog, I sit and I like take some basil, or I take a tomato, or something like that, and I throw them in my pocket, and I, kinda, I wave to you. Yeah, you can not see us. <laughs> <laughs> And Danielle, on, uh, on behalf of the council and the rest of the city of Water Bleed, I'd like to present this to you. So thank you for all the hard work you've done.
actual move into old business? Your Honor, the first order of old business this evening is a public hearing. This is a public hearing for the purpose of hearing those persons who wish to be heard regarding proposed local law number four of the year 2020. And this is a local law to amend chapter 245, Trees of the Code of the City of Waterloo. Okay. Thank you. What I'll do now is open up the public hearing. If anybody would like to, to come up and, uh, and, and speak on this, uh, on this proposal, I believe, Jordan, you want to give a brief uh, explanation of it? A, a few changes that we've uh, proposed. Right. So, local law, the proposed local law is local law number four of the year 2020. As indicated, it's a local law to amend Chapter 245 Trees of the Code of the City of Waterloo. Specifically, the local law, uh, if passed, would amend uh, two sections. One, Section 245.3A1, the establishment and the member of the terms um, where there is a City of Waterloo Tree Committee, and this local law is passed to increase the membership um, to five members. And then Section 245.3A, Subdivision 2, would be amended to essentially state that the appointment of one member would be for five years. Uh, another member for a term of four, three, two, one. And then thereafter, all appointments shall be for three years. There are currently members on the tree committee. Essentially, what this local law does, it increases the membership um, and establishes the terms uh, as a result of uh, the additional members that will be appointed subsequent to this. So the local law, if passed, um, we'll then be followed with the Secretary of State, we have to wait for that to be passed, and then there will be an appointment by the Mayor subject to approval of the City Council of additional members, and then that will go before the Council for uh, consideration and we'll wait for Perfect. Thank you. Is there anyone that tonight would like to speak on, on this uh, on this matter? Now, speaking about the... If you're going to speak on the matter, you'll, can you... Step up to the podium, or if, if you can't, you can stay right from where you are right there. Just give us your name, your name and, um, and your address, please. I'm speaking on behalf of my wife, Janice Pontor. Okay. Okay. Um, now on the trees, is that to get trees taken care of? No, this is just to amend the, uh, the local law to increase the number of people that are on the committee itself. Oh, okay. I'm right. sorry. Anyone else? All right. There's no one else who would like to speak um, on the on the uh, on this matter. Or I'll close the public hearing. All right. Thank you. Public hearing be closed. Next matter, uh, Dave. The next is also a public hearing, and this is a public hearing for the purpose of hearing those persons who wish to be heard with regards to the estimate of revenue and expenditures for the fiscal year 2021, commencing January 1st, 2021. Okay, thank you. All right, I'll uh, open up this public hearing. As you remember, the last meeting, what we had is uh, the general manager made a presentation and proposed, uh, proposed budget with the director of finance. If everybody would like to uh, speak on this matter, would you please step up to the podium um, and you'll be heard from there. I missed the last meeting, I'm sorry. It's okay. You can always look it out online, too, if uh, there's a video. It's boring. Um, overall, I can see where there's been a lot of work done on the budget to maintain some costs and stuff like that, but I did find some glaring differences that I thought stood out. And uh, one of them being uh, the police department. Um, we supposedly got rid of our chief last year because of budgetary, and I see that back in the in the line item again. I'm not degrading the police at all. We have a fantastic department. But I also see that their overtime went down. And in opposite of that, the fire department's overtime is humongous. Went up like $196,000 for their overtime, but yet our police department went down 50,000. So 
you know, the differences there are astronomical. The um, purchasing of equipment, you know, I understand the fire department needs equipment and stuff like that, I just don't know what that's all about. The other thing was the uh, insurance that we're paying on um, items went up like $86,000. The insurance went up and what is uh, Medicare reimbursement? That went up, it was a negative line item in last year's budget and this year it's $81,000. So and those are just a few of them. I have a whole list, but those okay. are the big ones. Can we answer any of those or? Would you like me to? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, starting at the top, uh, I think you mentioned the police. I can't hear you. Starting at the top, I think you mentioned the police department. Yes. Um, so their overtime decreased because we lost a contract with uh, the unified court system. I think I called it the right thing. Um, we used to have our uh, department staff the court and they would reimburse us. We had budgeted about $75,000 of expenses and revenues for that in the past. Uh, we are losing that effective April 1st, I believe. So we did decrease overtime as well as our revenue to cover that. Uh, for the fire department overtime, they received a grant this year to send three uh, firemen to paramedic school. So along with that grant came some equipment. So those costs are covered by grant. Um, if, if it's covered, then why is it a line item expense in the budget? You'll also see a revenue line. I believe it's a four... By the way, that's the question I ask Amanda all the time. It's a, it's a, it's a, the answer, I, I believe, it's a financial accounting uh, practice where even though they are going to, getting a grant and they are going to be, the city is going to be reimbursed for it, because we have to send them, put the money out originally, it has to go in that line for accounts well, to, make, to make everything budget. Yeah, I just, now, I, I really I'm not an account, I'm not an accountant. You're, you're good. You're, I'm not you're, an accountant, that's, that's but perfect. I wanted to let, I wanted to uh, let you know that. Yeah. I asked that question too. You'll limit credits. Uh, yeah. A4389 is federal aid. You'll see $125,000 budgeted for this year and $332,000 budgeted for next year. That encompasses both the equipment and the overtime. Okay. So what are we going to do with, you know, the poor police department? If they, have, they need overtime because the city's not up to snuff and you're decreasing their overtime. That's going to be a line on a budget that's going to go over budget. It has to because... So again, we're decreasing that revenue or that expense li expenditure line uh, because we had previously had specific duties that those gentlemen were doing that they're no longer responsible for doing. And I believe their overtime was incurred doing the court security at, at the city court. And as of April 1st, 2021, that is, in, that is no longer the case. Right, that overtime is going to be done by the court system themselves. Uh, so the, the staff, right, the staffing. Right, the, the staff court system is taking over the staffing. Insurance is expense, is that um, under A1910? Uh, our insurance staff? for liability and uh, property and um, all of our insurances went up about 15%. Uh, and the 86000 has to do with how much is hitting the water fund and the sewer fund. It's a proportion of that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and the Medicare, yeah. again, water sewer proportion made it negative last year. Uh, this year, uh, that cost is for, I believe, CSEA and police department retired employees that get reimbursed for their what they pay to Medicare. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Reimbursement. I mean, I have stuff I like to talk about. Is it about the budget or it about the budget? No. Okay, then later yeah. on we have a general open comment. Okay, I've never been to one. That's okay. Don't worry about it. You won't forget this one. All right, if there's no other, no other uh, comments being made, then I'll, uh, I'll close the public hearing.
thank you very much. I appreciate everybody's um, thoughts and comments on it. And again, it, this doesn't always mean that you can't ever ask a question. There's any one of us that are around that will, will be happy to answer the question. If, you, if you're asking myself, I don't know the answer, go to Amanda, you know, if it's within the finances and, and that kind of area. So please, if you got a question, ask it. And if you hear something, ask it. All right? I appreciate it. Next order of business. The next order of business is a second reading of ordinance number 2036. This is an ordinance authorizing and directing general manager Joseph Lasavita to dispose of certain surplus vehicles and equipment. I'll make a motion that we move on, uh, on the ordinance there. I'll second that. All right. Uh, this is a second reading, Gordon. We, yeah. we went through this uh, last meeting. Um, what this does is we put this uh, a series of items that we're trying to liquidate that were old or retired uh, equipment uh, with the city of Waterbury. Um We did hold an auction uh, of which no one showed, but we are looking to try to liquidate or dispose of these items um, in a manner to get them off the city's books. And uh, that's what this uh, ordinance will do, allow me to uh, get the best price that we can uh, for equipment. Could I have a list of the equipment you have that you were going to auction? Uh, sure. Can I ask how you plan on doing that job? Well, uh, we, we advertised um, with uh, an a company who act, act, you know, did the marketing for the uh, auctioneer. Uh, we are going to another auctioneer uh, now to try to put that online. Uh, there was an individual who saw this equipment, for example, our old uh, Sigur uh, snowblower that we used to drive on the streets back in the day. Um, he actually showed interest in the, the vehicle uh, for $1,000. Um, so we actually did uh, look to sell that one. Uh, but anything else, it's, it's an equipment that might be sitting in our yard, the DPW yard that's long since broken. Uh, one police car that had uh, been totaled uh, in an accident and they've been taking parts off it here and there. Um, so we're going to try to do the best thing we can to try to get them out of here and you know clean it up, get it off our insurances and everything else going forward. Uh, but for the most part, we're going to try to at least show it one more time in papers uh, online and see if we can hold that for maybe 30 days. And if not, then we'll just continue to uh, you know uh, move forward. And part of that might be junking some equipment that we have. There's a other municipalities in the area use a company called a uh, auction company called Collar City. They put it online. Okay. And they set a time frame, November 18th through December 3rd, and everybody bids on them, and then you have to show up and pay for it. I'm sure you don't do it for free. Yeah. The College City, they sell Ryder Dam selling their excess police cars and other equipment right now. And I know Amanda also looked at another company that does a similar uh, type of service for municipalities. Mm -hmm. Auctions uh, International. Uh, Auctions International. So. Didn't they get them once before to get rid of some? That's correct. We did. But it ever happened. I don't believe anything ever happened. Right. Well, I don't, I don't know if it ever happened. You, they can list well, the them, vehicles, but they don't, they don't sell. They there, there's, sell. No, there's no more. A lot of times it's, it's some of the things that are actually usable. I can say nothing happened because I went online to look at them and they were never there. Okay. I do know that, that this is we, we had a lot of trouble at one time to get them online because we did pass an ordinance or a, a resolution to adjust it so that we could, instead of going just through the paper, you know, that we could actually do online. Uh, yeah, that was, that, was, that, was, that was your idea. Right. It was right. a very good idea in the past, my understanding. I'm going through recollection, of course, right. a resolution authorizing my understanding of putting certain vehicles or equipment, utilizing that procedure in order to gain the best possible result. But so we could use Collar City without a problem because it's just another uh, another online service, right? Yeah, I mean, this ordinance right here would allow the general manager discretion to dispose of the vehicles and equipment in the best interest of the city of Portland to maximize the best price. I mean, the other alternative would be having public auctions and, and advertising and spending money for advertisement without, you know, having the attendance. So. And then the only thing we have to be careful of, if we go to one auctioneer company, just like selling a home, we list with a real estate agent, 
Well, that you can anything six months after the fact, so now you're tying up our time frame and our equipment. So we want to do this as, you know, inexpensive as possible, efficiency as possible, but try to at least get rid of some of this equipment that's been sitting for a while. Yeah, because you've got stuff online, you can put it online. Is there any other questions? I will follow up. Councilwoman Diamond? In favor. Councilman Torrenzello? In favor. Mayor Patricelli? In favor. Your Honor, the next order of business is a second reading also. It's ordinance number 2037, an ordinance of the City of Waterloo, New York, providing that the code of the City of Waterloo, Chapter 260, Vehicles and Traffic, Article 4, Handicap Parking, Section 260-30C, Sign Locations, be amended. Uh, Mayor, I'll make a motion that we move on the ordinance. Second that. Okay, so this is a, an ordinance that uh, authorizes and pass an amendment of our city code, essentially section 260.30c, uh, for authorization for handicapped parking signs to be erected in front of the residence located at 1503 4th Avenue in the city of Waterloo. Okay. Okay. Any questions? Councilwoman Dunn? In favor. Councilman Torrenzello? In favor. Mayor Patrick Sell? In favor. I had a question on that handicap sign. Okay, that's what you were talking about, correct? Yes. Um, I, I had the handicap you know, on my car, but um, the chief of police at the time said you have to be in a walker to get the sign. And it was ridiculous to me. If I had to be in a walker, you know, I wouldn't be driving, you know. And and I'm, if you ever come down Third Ave, I mean, I've had to park a block and a half away, and it takes me quite a while. I have to sit on stoops and stuff like that. And I just wanted a sign in front of my house. You know? Well, we can talk about that later. Okay. We'll, we'll talk about Sorry. that later. Okay. The next order of business is a, also a second in. reading. Did we vote on it? We didn't vote on it. Oh, we didn't vote on it. Okay. Yeah, 2037, we did. Yeah, 2037. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Next, 2038. We voted on it, didn't we? 37, you did not. I've written down here 30. 36, you did. 37, you did. Yeah, 37, we did. He was the president. Yeah. I think we could take the next one. That's what we can just do. Yeah, yeah. 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 We just take it and roll again. We'll take a roll again. Okay. Councilwoman Dyer. In favor. Councilman Torrenzo. In favor. Mayor Patricia. In favor. The next is a second reading as well of ordinance number 2038. This is an ordinance of the City Ward of Leith, New York, providing that section 260 48, Schedule 12, trucks over certain weights excluded of the city of, of the code of the city of Ward of Leith be amended. Mayor, I'll make a motion that we uh, move on the ordinance. I'll second that. Okay. And I'll, I'll ask um, our Chief Strzok to, to weigh in uh, after me if you would like, but this is uh, an ordinance that um, would amend section 260.48 um, and, and has a schedule of trucks over certain weights excluded which essentially means that trucks in excess of the weights indicated on the signs are excluded from the following streets or parts thereof except for pickup and delivery of materials on such streets. So the name of the street, uh, 8th Avenue, weight limit, 2, um, and then the location from 19th Street to the North City Line. In addition, 9th Avenue, weight limit times 5, from 15th Street to 25th Street. Um, so if this is passed, this would authorize um, the amendment of the code to be revised with that uh, information, name of street, weight, location, and authorize the placement of the applicable sign. Any questions? No questions. No. Okay. Council, Councilwoman Dunn? In favor. Councilman Torrenzello? In favor. Mayor Patricelli? In favor. Your Honor, that concludes the old business for this evening's agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Are you willing to do business, please?
First order of new business is Local Law Number 3 of the year 2020. This is a local law to override the tax levy limit established by General Municipal Law 3C for the 2021 City of Waterfleet budget. Mayor, I'll make a motion that we move on Local Law Number 3. I'll second it. Uh, this is a local law to go over the tax levy limit, which this year, I'm sorry, I, I'm blanking on what the amount is. It's usually 2%, um, but this year I think it's 1.6, yeah, six, six, five, six, seven. Um, and as our budget presented last week, we are looking at a 4.8% uh, increase. We discussed this a couple weeks ago, right? Yeah. Yeah. There was a public hearing. It was a public hearing. We discussed the whole thing. Yeah. Yep. No questions. Okay. Yeah. In other words, um, the taxes are going to go up uh, four point something percent. Correct. Yeah. Um, we'll have to wait till later on. So we have part of the general comment. Oh. Okay. Okay. Like we'll, we'll, we'll go over. We'll go over with you. Pull the roll, please. Councilwoman Diamond? In favor. Councilman Torrencello? In favor. Mayor Patricelli? In favor. The next is local law number four of the year 2020. And this is a local law to amend chapter 245, trees of the code of the city of Waterloo. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion that we move on that uh, local law. I'll second the motion. Okay. And this is uh, the law that basically allows the, uh, the committee to go from three to five. Okay. 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 Any other questions? Pull the roll, please. Councilwoman Diamond? In favor. Councilman Torrencello? In favor. Mayor Patricelli? In favor. Your Honor, the next order of business is ordinance number 2039. This is an ordinance of the City Award of Elite New York, providing that section 260-50, schedule 9, Parking prohibited at all times of the code of the city ward of Lee be amended. Uh, Mayor, I'll make a motion that we move on the ordinance. I'll second that. Jordan? Yes, thank you. Um, so this is an ordinance to uh, amend the city code to allow the authorization of no parking signs. Uh, the location would be name of the street, mall place, south side, location from the southwest corner of 12th Avenue to a distance of uh, 20 feet. So if you're asked, it's not me that's making up these locations or coming up <laughs> with this. Um, there's investigation and background and um, specifically, um, you know, our acting chief of police, Lieutenant Brian Sprott, uh, when indicated and sent the memo that at the request of the Department of Public Works, um, it's completed the site review um, of the area to add no parking signs of all place at 12th Avenue. Um, and he um, indicated the reason why that the DPW advises that they were having difficulty, difficulty safely making turns at the intersection uh, with their large vehicles. Um, and he goes on for other reasons, but that is the background how certain legislation uh, comes to light uh, before the council is that there's certain requests um, in this instance, an investigation was done and a recommendation um, to have this placed on the agenda for an amendment of our code. Chief, that's really narrow at that spot. I, right? I drove by there, yeah. yes. And it is. And, and so, but is it, is uh, the parking going to be limited on both sides or just one side? Uh, we actually, myself and uh, Mr. Katie went out to the site visit and uh, we looked at the intersection. We believe just one side would be enough to be able to make the turns. Okay. For the garbage trucks, the DPW trucks, and the fire trucks. Okay. So just one side. Okay. How'd you make? How'd you determine which side? I'm just curious. When I plow, I can walk the street the wrong way. Okay. <laughs> that's it. No, that's a good answer. Yeah, that's a good. No, that's what I was hoping. You. I hope that there'd be an answer. Good. Thanks. Take yeah, it down. It's too icy. It's icy. Yeah, that's right. Take it down. Right. Right. You got to go up the hill. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. No other questions? We'll uh, go on. Councilwoman Dunn? In favor. Councilman Torrencello? In favor. Mayor Patricelli? In favor. Ordinance number 2040 is an ordinance of the City of Waterbelief, New York, providing that the code of the City of Waterbelief 
Chapter 260, Vehicles and Traffic, Article 4, Handicap Parking, Section 260-30C, Sign Locations, be amended. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion that we move on the ordinance. I will second that. Yep. Uh, same procedure type of ordinance as ordinance number 2037, um, different location. Uh, so for ordinance number 2040, we would authorize handicapped parking signs to be erected in front of the residence located at 1435 First Avenue in the city. Thank you. If there are no questions, I'll okay. call the roll. Councilwoman Dunn? In favor. Councilman Torrencello? In favor. Mayor Patricelli? In favor. Resolution number 9786 is a resolution approving, ratifying, and confirming the execution by Mayor Charles B. Patricelli of a memorandum of agreement between the County of Albany and the City of Waterloo for a back sweeper truck. Mayor, I'll make a motion and move on the resolution. I'll second that. So this was a, an MOU, a memorandum of understanding with the uh, County of Albany uh, with hopes to use their back truck. I know we're getting towards the end of the season where they uh, close them down and, and weatherize them for the winter, but we're hoping to at least clean out some of our catch basins um, that we need to do. Uh, and that's what this memorandum of understanding does, is allows us to use their truck with an operator in order to clean out our systems. Their people use it or our people use it? Uh, no, they because this is, is a like a several hundred thousand dollar okay. truck, their operator comes and we help uh, we along help. with them. <clears throat> and again, this is the shared agreement services agreements that we've been having with the county. Uh, and basically they've been totally uh, you know, willing to help us in any way, shape, or form. It's just that we need the agreements. Correct. So is that kind of weather dependent now? Like if the weather stays fairly decent, we can just do it as long as the weather is fairly decent? That's what we're hoping for. We're hoping to try to get somebody in tomorrow, uh, but we haven't had a return phone call. So if the weather stays within temperature, we're able to do that. But once they close their, their system or their truck and they weatherize it, then we'll probably won't see it till spring. Because the water going to freeze. Yeah. Okay. So this will go into the, this. Will, we can do this. This will be for more than just this period. This wall. Absolutely. We'll Correct. Go, we'll go in the spring too. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Questions. Great. So April. April 30, 2021. Then it'll be uh, perfect. Right. Term of the year. Thank you. Pull the roll, please. Councilwoman Diamond. In favor. Councilman Torrencelli. In favor. Mayor Patricelli. In favor. Resolution number 9787 is a resolution approving the proposal from Family Dan's Heating and Cooling for the furnishing and installing of two Bryant five-ton air handling units in the Waterbury Community Center located at 1501 First Avenue in the city of Waterbury in the amount of $10,480 and authorizing directing Mayor Charles B. Patricelli to execute a contract between the City Ward of Lee and Family Dan's Heating and Cooling. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion that we move on the resolution. And I will second it. Joe. Mr. Eubin and Mr. White, you know we've been struggling with this project for a number of years. And uh, the initial thought on this project was to try to look and hold it off to get an uh, HVAC system in there. We learned we couldn't do that. Uh, with it because it would punch into and, and kind of uh, change the, and alter the, uh, the building itself by putting holes into the building. This um, resolution here, because of the system we got, once we backcharged the uh, system, we started to see pinholes through our piping, which I think we all discussed during the course of this, is what's the integrity of the, the existing pipes. Uh, we are going to actually put in two alternating system now, which actually offset the plumbing or the, the boiler system, which become blowers now, the condemned units that will actually convert water as they run through and then blow heat into the system. But what it does, it actually allows us now to add a condenser unit to have air conditioning, which we were hoping for way back in the day when we stopped the process to say, can we look at it and get a secondary quote? So that's what this system here does for uh, $10,480. It allows us to uh, blow heat into the system. It's not radiant. But it also allows us to also get a condensing unit and put that secondary uh, air conditioning unit down in the spring. So we're we're at a little bit a little bit better than where we were before. 
And I welcome it. If you, if you want to uh, visit the site with me, just let me know and I'll bring you over there and, and uh, I'll show you. We're installing lights in the basement tomorrow if you want, you know, Mayor and I. Cool. <laughs> it, it really is amazing. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's coming. See it's what coming they have done with all of the old pipes. Just that whole, that whole, the whole yeah. Thing. We we didn't let ask you to crawl through though, did we? <laughs> to crawl through the uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've been through that. Okay, the question is, again, what is the building going to be used for? Okay, so we we. Uh, formed a committee to actually look to see what are the alternative uses for this. We've met with the Office uh, Unified Court System, OCA, Office of Court Administration. They're in love with the building in the sense to create a court there, which that means it opens up a, uh, I'll call it a net zero operation for the city because they will take over all costs associated with operating and running that uh, building. Um, the negative side of that is, if you're looking to create a community center that has a public benefit back to the community, they have first refusal to anyone who may want to use that building. Okay, I think back in the day when we looked at this property to see how we can make it a public venue, it was considered that community center look. If it becomes a court, they'll have first refusal based on, based on uh, safety components. We had a, a, a nonprofit committee to use it. They would have to get police to come in and sweep it to make sure there's nothing left behind and someone from a safety perspective. We're still going through that, what that building can be when it gets finally fixed and grows up. I think if you look to create a community or a city center, which I'm hoping to do and down the road as we start to see development come this way, a court system or a court building can complement that use. Uh, right now, there's no one that's stepped up to say, I want it to be an art center or I will buy this to be that. Um, committee has met several times over the last uh, six weeks to see what we can do with that building. Right now the only viable use is the OCA, the Office of Court Administration. Uh, it's probably going to be a two-year process to go through that and get designs. I know their architect is coming up from New York City. Hopefully now with COVID he still comes up. But if he comes up from New York City he'll be actually put designs in as to what a court system can look like within that. Um, they like the, uh, the size of it, they like the, uh, the way the church pews can actually function for seating. Uh, they have concerns about the religious attributes that are within the building that we'd have to change those because you can't blend the two together. Um, but we are working diligently to try to find that purpose for it. Are you talking about the community center? No, the church right over here. The, the church right over here. And, uh, Paul, the uh, other thing is, is that I know I think I've been hearing about since we we purchased that building years and years ago that that was going to be a site for possibly court and you know whatever that we we're going to do. But we've never, as far as I was I was told, we they had never met with the court system to actually see whether or not they even liked it. And we just recently reached out to them, and they that's when they came down yeah. uh, through contacts of Barb and all that that we you know they they looked at. So this is the very first time they've ever actually looked at it to actually know whether or not they actually, you know we're we're interested in that building. In the meantime, you know, like you say, we're looking at other options, we're exploring the other options. It's out, it's out for. We've talked to a few realtor, you know, real estate agents to see, hey, look, is there a possible, you know, what could it be used for? But in the meantime, we've now let the uh, museum kind of take the that section over, and they've actually cleaned it. Uh, they've uh, they're. You know, made, made it look presentable, um, and they're working on you know that for, they're working on some kind of like Victorian stroll or whatever. Uh, right. Let's say in December, but just to be able to say, hey, here's the building, and it's actually being used, not the intent, the full intent, and not that's going to be the long purpose or the final intent, but at least a partial intent yeah. that we're we're looking at until the court system says, Kenny, we're ready. You know, let's yeah. you know let's let's get going here. I so. I could see I, dumping ten thousand dollars into the building if we had had somebody that was definitely going to use it. Okay, if we could dump ten thousand dollars into a building, and we don't have no definite. Does everybody follow me? No, well, I think yeah, that's exactly what we're looking at. We don't yeah. want to use it. That's why the, the museum right now is being used. And again, I invite anybody to either. One to stop over and take a look at it because I think once you see it, you'll you kind of get a feel for it. 
and see that hey, this is this is okay for now. Yeah, but the one thing, um, it's not uh, general fund money uh, at this time. This is actually part of a grant that we got to stabilize the building a couple of years back through the state of New York. We actually had the state of New York first look at this before looked at this um, additional cost before we put it on the agenda, and they've signed off on it as a value component to doing the work. Um, so that, that's net zero to the city. Uh, Mr. Eubin, the other thing is, is talking with Howard Hanna, who's a very big commercial uh, real estate entity, uh, and talking with them recently, and I gave them and expressed, you know, the interest of the court system. If that comes through fruition, and that's the one tenant that we tend to get, they encouraged me highly to make sure we signed that contract, because that would be like a, a contract in perpetuity, because once they move there, uh, you know they hand up, they take over all the costs associated with that through an agreement, um, and you know, that's a net zero to the city as well. The other thing it also does to us is, is we received a grant to retrofit and renovate the downstairs to bring all services from downstairs, or upstairs, downstairs, and it makes our building more ADA compliant. In City Hall. In City Hall, in City Hall I apologize. Uh, but it makes it uh, ADA compliant as well. So it, it's actually a twofold process, but we have to wait till the court system accepts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. If there are no other questions, then we will. Well, the other question that comes along, as I'm speaking of, is has parking been considered? That's always an issue. I think you're right. strained as it is now with parking for City Hall. And well, there, in, none, nothing what we discussed will change that. Even if the court goes there, the court still uses the parking as it is now. But uh, you're, you're absolutely right. If we were to move into uh, some kind of a deli or a restaurant or something like that during, during the course of the day, it certainly would add parking if issues or strain on, on the area we're at. But that's not what we're looking at. So there's nothing that we're doing or changing or thinking about will change parking. You know, it's basically the, the, the watch. Certainly the idea of Mr. Las Vegas uh, was bringing a commercial realtor in there, that, that sounds good to the benefit of the city. Yep. It would draw other businesses also, I think. If that could come to the Thank you. Thank you. Oh, uh, Councilwoman Diamond. In favor. Councilman Florentello. In favor. Mayor Patricelli. In favor. Your Honor, that closes out this evening's uh, new business portion. Is there anything under appropriations that comes next? Order bills are out. Uh, <laughs> um, I think we've had a quite the past couple of weeks educating some of our residents on um, past due balances. A lot of people tend to um, not pay their water and sewer bills and they let them relevy onto their property tax and now they're seeing the cost of doing so. So um, it might behoove them to, to pay them uh, closer to on time instead of letting them relevy. So uh, I think that's been, that's been an eye-opening experience for a lot of residents. So we've been getting a lot of phone calls regarding that. Um, we had a few issues, not too, too many, um, but I think overall it's, it's been pretty positive. The change of software you did? Yes. I was just going to, these are the bills that were generated, first bills generated from the new software. Correct. Correct. Relatively smooth? Yes. Okay. Getting the hang of it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Looking for the wood. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Very good. All right. Um, Anything else to be brought before the council? Okay. Okay. The one thing I do want to mention too is uh, I'd like to ask uh, Don White or uh, 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 thank Don White for the uh, sign work that he, uh, he he presented to us. He he went through an uh, inventory of the city signs. It's pretty extensive. Um, I, that's something now that we're going to have to uh, look over and and do, but it was an inventory of all the signs in the city. Right, the parking, all the, so it, it's a pretty extensive list. Yeah, that sounds so, like it's a big job. That's a big job. Yeah, so thank you very much for that. Okay, um, they will move into public comment. At this time, the council has authorized a public comment period. If you wish to address the council, we ask you to come up to the podium, state your name and address, and you'll have two minutes with which to address the council. 
on any item you so choose. say to uh, follow the website too because um, again going with COVID and how we're going to be operating moving forward with meetings we'll be looking at doing these by Zoom uh, starting the next meeting. Mayor I'd like to make a motion to close the meeting. I'll second that. Clerk call the roll. Councilwoman Dunn. In favor. Councilman Tarancello. In favor. Mayor Patricella. In favor. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. 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 Thank you.